I'm going to show you how to add cookie-based authentication to an existing app. We're going to use this email client example that I've been working on for a couple of videos. There's a link to the full playlist in the description. But for this video, we're going to focus on all things authentication, why you need cookies, and how you can use the Superbase SSR package to handle all the tricky bits. Let's get into it. So here I have our email client. It has folders on the left, a list of emails in that folder. And then if we click on one of these emails, we can see its contents. But it doesn't really make sense for us to see anything on this page if the user is not currently signed in. So if we click this login button, we'll see our authentication page. And we have this button to log in with GitHub. The code for this page looks something like this. We have a form with a submit button and the GitHub logo. When we click it, that submits this form to this sign in action, which is declared above. So this is a server action. And right now we're just console logging out, sign in with GitHub. And if we open up the console for our dev server, we can see that message from when we clicked earlier. So we can get rid of that console log now and we just need to create a new Superbase client. So we can do that by saying const Superbase is equal to calling the create client function, which comes in from dot dot slash utils slash Superbase. And if we have a look at that one, it's just wrapping a call to the create client function that comes in from Superbase JS, just so we don't need to copy and paste these environment variables or any other configuration that we might add as part of this video. So if we go back to our login page, we now have our Superbase client. And so to sign in with GitHub, we can await a call to superbase.auth.sign in with OAuth. And this takes a configuration object with the key provider set to the string GitHub. Now I configured GitHub as an authentication provider in between these videos. So if you need to do that for your project, check out the guide linked in the description for setting up an OAuth app with GitHub. So when we call this sign in with OAuth method, it will give us back a couple of things. It will give us back an error if something went wrong or the data if everything was all good. So if we do get back an error, then we probably want to be kind to our future selves and console log it out. Otherwise, we want to return a redirect, which is a function that comes in from next slash navigation. And then we just need to give this one a path that we want to redirect to. So in this case, that will be data dot URL. So this is a URL that we get back from initiating this sign in with OAuth method. So this will send us off to GitHub to authenticate. But then after that's finished, we still need to redirect the user back to our landing page. And so we do that by passing an additional parameter for options, which is set to an object with the key redirect to set to our origin. And so we can get our origin above by calling the headers function, which should come in from next slash headers. So we can just import that manually. So we want to say import headers from next slash headers and then calling this headers function will give us back a list of all of the headers. So we want to call get and pass it the string origin. And this is complaining that null is not assignable to type string or undefined. So we can just make this a string by using backticks and then dollar sign open curly and then closed curly after it and backticks. Don't worry. We need to do this for the next step anyway. So when we click that GitHub logo, we call this sign in with OAuth function, which gives us back a URL, which we redirect to, to kick off that authentication flow with GitHub. And then when that completes, we want to redirect to the landing page. And now back in our application, if we click here to sign in with GitHub, it'll step us through that OAuth flow with GitHub. And eventually we'll end up back on the landing page of our application. Okay, cool. Now that we have authentication, let's make the rest of our app protected. So you need to be signed in to be able to see any of those emails. If we have a look at our next.config.js file, we'll see this has a redirect set up from the landing page of our application to slash f slash inbox. So that's going to take us to this f route. And then this is a dynamic route. So this part of the URL will come in as this name variable and this page.tsx server component will be mounted for that route. So we want this one to require authentication and we also want this this new route to require authentication. So since these both exist within the same sub route of slash f slash whatever the folder name is, we can create a new file for layout.tsx, which will be loaded for any routes within this folder. So this server component and also this server component. So this is a pretty simple layout component. It takes some children as a prop and then returns those children again. So we're not rendering anything additional, but any logic we add before this return statement is going to be run for any of the child routes of this component. So let's create a new Superbase client by calling the create client function. Again, that comes in from our utils folder. We then want to check whether we have an authenticated user. So we can say const the data that comes back 
and we want to destructure the user object, we get this by awaiting a call to superbase.auth.getUser. And so this user object will either be a user or null. So if we don't have a user, then we want to redirect, which again is a function that comes in from next slash navigation. And the path we want to navigate unauthenticated users to is slash login. Otherwise, if we do have a user, then we just continue on to render the children. So let's step through this process in our application. So we click the sign in with GitHub button and it doesn't work. Hang on, what's going on here? Are we not redirecting correctly to the landing page? Well, let's add the best damn debugging tool there is out there, the console.log here statement. And let's go back to our application and sign in with GitHub. Again, we can see something's going on. That little bar is pulsing when we click this. So let's open up the console of our development server and we can see here, here, here. So we definitely got here. So let's move this under our get user statement and check what is our user set to. And again, let's click the button and open up our console and we see user is null. Okay, you got me. I knew this was gonna happen, but I wanted you to experience it with me. The problem is that by default, Superbase.js stores the user's session in local storage. So we can see it is getting set correctly, but local storage doesn't exist on the server. And guess where server components and server actions run? On the server. Therefore, we need to use cookies to store the user's session rather than local storage. Thankfully, we've developed a super handy package called SSR for this exact problem. Let's use pmpm to install or i the at superbase slash SSR package. We also need at superbase slash superbase.js. But since we already have this installed in our project, we just need the SSR package. And now that that's done, we can run our development server again and then open up this helper function for create client. And we want to change this import to the create server client function, which means we can get rid of this alias. And this one comes in from the SSR package. We can then copy and paste this one. And then this is lit up red because we need to pass these two environment variables, but then we also need an additional configuration object called options. So we can pass that one. So I'm just going to paste this one in. And this is just declaring how to get, set, and remove a cookie in Next.js. So we need an instance of our cookie store. So we can declare that above, which means we need to refactor this slightly to actually have a body of our function. And then we want to return this big create server client blob. So if we paste that one here, then above that return statement, we can declare a new variable for cookie store, which is the result of calling the cookies function that comes in from next slash headers. And so this cookie store can now be used to interact with the cookie headers on our request. So we can call cookie store dot get, pass it a name. And then if we get a cookie back, then we want to return its value. And then we also declare how to set and also remove a cookie. We also need to import this cookie options type, which it's not nicely inferring, but this comes in as a type from the SSR package. So we can say we want the create server client function and also the type for cookie options. And so this adds quite a bit to the configuration when we're creating our Superbase client, but anywhere where calling this create client function can remain exactly as it is, as well as how we're using that client to do things like get our user or over in our db actions.ts file where we're using our Superbase client to perform mutations or in our queries.ts file that has all of our data fetching logic. Thankfully, we also have this awesome Next.js auth guide, which will be linked in the description. That steps through all of this with some nice copy and pasteable code snippets so you don't need to pause the video and type out every single character. Sorry if you already did that. There's also a sneaky way to generate all of this so you don't have to type any of it, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. There are just two more bits we need to configure. The first one is in our login page. After we've authenticated with GitHub, we want to redirect to our origin. So this will either be localhost over port 3000 or whatever our production URL is. But then we want to navigate to slash auth slash callback. And then we need to declare this new route. So under the app folder, let's create a new file at auth slash callback slash route dot ts. So this will be a route handler. And again, I'm just gonna paste in this big blob. So this is listening to get requests on this route. It's then getting the code from the search params, which will be automatically sent to this route by GitHub during that authentication flow. So then we're creating a Superbase client to exchange that unique code for the user's session. And then we're just redirecting the user again back to that origin. So this will just navigate back to the landing page. So this pattern is called the proof key for code exchange pattern or Pixie, which is just a more secure way of doing OAuth. 
So when GitHub is happy that our user is who they say they are, it redirects them to our slash auth slash callback route with this unique code, which we exchange for the user's session. And so all of that redirection stuff happens automatically by telling GitHub where to redirect the user to after completing that authentication process. And we can test this whole authentication flow in the browser by going to the authentication page and clicking sign in with GitHub. And you can see we've been successfully redirected to the landing page and we can see my GitHub avatar and also my GitHub username and if we open up the console and go over to application we can see our superbase session has been correctly set under cookies so our user is now authenticated but there's a bug when the session expires and superbase attempts to refresh a new sesh <laughs> the user will be unexpectedly signed out. And if we have a look under application and cookies, they're gone. Where are my cookies? The reason this is happening is because server components only get read access to cookies. So when we call superbase.auth.getUser, this will automatically refresh expired sessions before returning that user object. But because this layout is a server component, it can't update that cookie with our new session. And so the browser just automatically removes the expired one. Therefore, we need to use a route handler, server action, or middleware to refresh this session before it hits our server component route. So let's create another helpful little helper under utils slash superbase. So this is going to be a new file called middleware.ts. And this is going to export out this big scary blob. No, it's not really that scary. It's just a quite verbose way of again, getting, setting, and then removing a cookie. The difference is in middleware, we need to change the cookies on both the request and the response. So it looks just a little bit more intimidating. Again, you can get that one from the docs linked in the description or just wait just a little bit longer and I'll show you that single command that does all of this for you. So now we just need our actual middleware.ts file. So we wanna create that at the rootmost point of our project. So again, middleware.ts and we're going to paste this one in here. So this one uses our middleware helper to create a superbase client. It passes in the request so we can modify the cookies on that request and gives us back a modified response and also our superbase client. Then we're calling superbase.auth.getUser and we're not actually doing anything with the user, we're just throwing it away. But again, this get user user function attempts to refresh expired sessions. And then because middleware has read and write access to those cookies, it can update the cookies on the request and the response before returning this response, which will load our server component route that the user requested. So again, this just ensures that we have a fresh session before we reach the server component because the server component only has read access to these cookies to determine whether this user is authenticated or not. And the last little part of this middleware file is exporting a config config containing a matcher. And so this is a big scary regex or regex pattern that excludes a bunch of stuff. So static files, favicons, all these different image types, things that we don't want to run this middleware logic on because they're just assets for our application rather than server component routes, which is all we really need to run this for. And now our user can go on happily using this application and reading all of their unread emails. And when their session is ready to expire, it will be automatically refreshed in the background as they're going through using the application. But that's quite a bit of manual configuration. If you want to skip all of that, I recommend you check out this video right here. We use a special Superbase template that's built right into the Create Next App CLI tool to configure all of this server-side cookie stuff so you don't even need to think about it. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.